Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 1997D Penny. And these ones minted in Denver have potential to be worth well beyond the one cent that you could spend it for. Uh, there could be some rare varieties where if you look really close on the coins, a few of them will have these, and people, especially collectors, pay up for them. Um, there's also some error mint error coins that i want to highlight as well as different conditional rarities if it's like a pristine example at what point should you send it into pcgs for grading just because of its condition let's get into the video and presentation so we'll get right into it this 1997d um, coin is going to be a zinc planchet, so 2.5 grams. Uh, it started out in 1959 as a fully copper coin and then transitions midway through 1982. Lincoln was the first um, person to be featured on a U.S. circulating commemorative that wasn't like an embodiment of liberty. Uh, you can pause for some of the other information, but just want to say it's really very rarely worth certifying these coins unless it's going to be an upper, upper grade example because there were over four and a half billion of them produced. Um, in Mint State 68, it is $100, and then if you get the 68 plus designation or even Mint State 69, you know, that's going to be in the low thousands of dollars range. Mint State 67, maybe you'll claw your money back, especially if it's bulk submitted, but you want to be careful. Uh, though, if you have a coin that is absolutely flawless, you know, almost no hits anywhere on the coin with booming luster, you can consider submitting it. So that's the, you know, non-variety. This is going to be the least expensive variety we discussed today, but it's something you know people enjoy looking for these even if it's just going to be a one to five dollar coin you know anything that's not certifiable is worth one cent unless it's a mint error which we'll get to later but this one there's a slightly doubled column that looks like almost a chip to the right of lincoln in the memorial um, so that one's a good one to search for these are some of the ones i think are more attractive because you see some doubled columns both in the leftmost uh, and the rightmost bays um, though these are lightly doubled compared to some of the other doublings um, that are in some of the similar years here. Uh, there's also traces of doubling on the outside, which is a little bit uncommon. But this sells, you know, maybe an AU condition, about a $5 find, and then mid state 65 red, 25 bucks. If you got one that's like mid state 67 red, and it's clearly doubled and you can get it attributed, you know, that would be a pretty cool coin that would be quite valuable. There's also a few more of these varieties, um, stronger doubling, and I adjusted the value estimates a little bit upwards because of that. Again, in, in both bays on the left and the right side, uh, really clear, especially in the right side, and then sort of on the bottoms of the left side. Um, so that's a nice one to be searching for. And then finally, there's a fourth that I think is a little bit less prominent, uh, certainly, but still has some elements of that. Uh, it's, it's a lot tougher to see on the right, it seems like on the left, uh, sort of in the bottom bays, there's some nice, uh, some nice spreads. So that's that. Then in terms of these off-center coins or mint errors, the first one is off-center, then we get to some wrong planchet stuff, but this one just would have um, not entered the striking press fully and only part of it gets struck. Uh, still retains the shape enough where it escapes out of the mint, but sold for a hundred bucks. You know, really nice, good eye appeal coin. Uh, you can see the zinc shining through on both sides because it is just a tiny copper plating on the outside of it. Um, this one is more expensive, struck on a dime planchet, 215 bucks, and it sold for about 15 years ago. So there, you know, that valuation I think would be higher today given the strength of the mint error market at the moment. But there were a fair amount of these varieties where there were just tons of pennies being produced and some dime planchets made their way through. Similar in size, gets out of the mint, but is quickly discovered. And again, this one sold for 215 bucks. This one was a little bit more, was some sort of a foreign planchet. So it's not like, you know, the way that would have been discovered is because as you can see, you know, maybe the uh, coin looks pretty good where it has been struck, but it's just, there's not enough planchet. So some coin that would have been being struck for a different government, um, that planchet dropped in, received a striking and got outside of the mint. Um, so, or, or the coin would have been a little bit smaller, excuse me, that was being struck for somewhere else, but United States of America, it almost looks like somebody took a, like a knife and sort of scalped the coin or something, but in fact, you know, you can see the regular rim over here, it was just the wrong planchet, um, that was, that entered, so... That one sold for 230. I bet it would be a little bit more today. Really cool stuff to look for. I like the double die reverses where you can see clear 
doubling in the columns, but there's also, you know, the little stuff. And then maybe if you got one that's just gorgeous, gorgeous, you should send it in as well. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date, uh, mint mark, denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll, yeah, have fun seeing you there.